Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. We are going to be talking about how to choose a computer for music. Yep, and uh, a lot of the questions that people ask are, do I get a Mac or do I get a PC? And we're going to talk about that as well as some more in-depth questions. Yeah, I think the important thing to take away in short is that while there isn't like a clear choice, Mac or PC, there are some differences that you need to bear in mind. So we're going to get through a few of those and also then also differences between laptops and desktops and what you should think about. The first thing we should talk about is the differences in drivers with uh, Mac versus PC. Yeah, and specifically how they relate to audio. So. This is one area where Macs do have a bit of an advantage, I would say, from personal experience. I think it's important to say that what we're gonna be talking about today is very subjective. Uh, it's not like massively scientific, but it's just passing on things we've picked up. So Core Audio is um, the audio system for Mac that is generally used by, my, by audio sequencers and the system. And then on Windows, you have DirectX Audio, and then you also have these drivers called ASIO drivers, which are specifically for music production. Um, so, DirectX and Core Audio are kind of the equivalent of each other on Mac and PC, but for some reason I've always found the DirectX Windows drivers a little bit crap. And and this is this is in no way a less powerful computer than the uh, than the that you know the MacBook you've been using, but you're getting kind of weird buffer problems, right? Yes. Okay, so a way around that is using sure. these ASIO drivers. And ASIO drivers give you much better performance, much more akin to core audio on a Mac, but it will often lock out other applications being able to use the audio interface. So you, you might not be able to just tab into YouTube and quickly play a clip if you're referencing. So that's kind of annoying. So that is something to bear in mind. It's not a complete deal breaker, but there is a little bit of compromise when it comes to that, which uh, you know Mac has a bit of an advantage on. So yeah, the, the other main difference is uh, when it comes to plugins, uh, Mac has the uh, capacity to use VST plugins as well as audio units. Uh, PCs cannot use audio units. They never will be able to. It's a Mac only thing and it's just something, something you consider. A lot of plugins are available in both AU and VST, but some are only available in VST or only in AU, so you gotta make sure that the computer you want to buy is going to be able to run the plugins that you need to use. Yeah, and, and it's worth mentioning as well that within that, not all software supports AU that runs on Mac. It's, it's generally more widely supported. I mean, um, Ableton, does it support both? It supports both, right? Yeah, Ableton runs AUs on Mac, yeah. Okay, yeah. But like some of them don't, I can't, I think it might may have been Bitwig that I was using that didn't, I, I could be wrong. But e I mean, either way, VST is kind of like the gold standard that's generally used, but it is something for sure to bear in mind that if, if there's a specific plugin that you want that's only available in AU, that's yeah. going to limit your choices here a little bit. And, and there's also, you got to consider that some VSTs are like PC only, even if yes. they are VSTs. The free as well as stuff uh, like the FL. FL, obviously you can't run on a Mac. Or can you? I, I don't There's know. A, I, th I think it just There's came out of beta. I'm not an expert on this, but I, th I think the point we're just trying to make is do your research, find out what you want to use. Yeah. Um, and, you know, make a decision based on that because that is something to consider. Um, so minimum specs, uh, we're going to stick with um, just like something very broad that will probably cover most DAW programs. Um, the thing you need to focus on when you're choosing a computer is processing power, storage, and memory. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, I think I think there's an easy way of putting it these days. Compared to the you know the computers we used to use to make music years ago. I mean, I, I was using some one gigahertz dual core Athlon for making the early Dodge and Plusky stuff. And I remember you you know you were on a dual core uh, 13 inch thingy from the yeah. Many I was years always ago. a Mac guy from the beginning, yeah. but they've definitely gotten a lot faster. But anyway, I think generally speaking. Other than things like Chromebooks and like these kind of like, you know, very low power, portable netbook type things, pretty much any computer you buy today is gonna be powerful enough to make music on. Like it's gonna be, you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna really have to try hard to buy something. Like, as, you know, I'm talking anything from like three, four hundred dollars upwards will probably be absolutely fine new and used. We'll get to that in another video, but a lot less. As long as it runs uh, Windows or Mac OS, yeah. you're good. Pretty much, it should be fine. So like, I suppose just to be a little bit more specific, um, entry level chips like an i3 or a right, you know, a lower end Ryzen 5, if you're AMD chips, will be any of those will be totally yeah, totally I'd say fine. Ryzen 3 would definitely work as yeah, well. Yeah, even the Ryzen 3, to be honest. Yeah, won't be amazing, but it, yeah, it'll I mean, work. you'll be able to write music yeah. for sure. Um, and then 
I guess another thing to think about is storage. Um, make sure you get an SSD. You do not want to be using a hard drive for music production, a mechanical hard drive, because when you're going through searching through sample libraries and stuff like that, you don't want there to just be like delays and loading things. It's really going to annoy you. Um, so make sure you get an SSD. Um, I think most computers pretty much have SSDs these days. And in terms of RAM, like eight probably be fine. Yeah, it? maybe even less. Um, yeah, the, the, the minimum that's recommended by like Ableton is four. Mm -hmm. uh, the recommended amount is eight, and I would personally never do like less than eight. So I have 16, and I think both my computers. Yeah, yeah. You just don't want to have to worry about that ever. Sure. It's it's depending on what you're using. If you're not using massive sample libraries like Contact, you could probably get by with less. But I think eight is about the entry level for most computers these days. But you certainly, unless you want to be using a lot of very large sample libraries, and you know doing some kind of Hans Zimmer type stuff, you're very unlikely to need more than eight gigs of RAM just for making like electronic music. Anyway. Okay. So on the higher end of things, if you if you have a little bit more money to spend and you're not just like, what's the cheapest thing I can buy that will produce music? Uh, there are some ways that you can kind of uh, upgrade your system to make it a little bit faster. And the number one way to do that, I would say, is the processor. Yeah. Uh, because the processor is the brain that is processing um, all the effects and the synthesizers and, and samples that you are putting into your uh, software track by track. So the more cores you have and the faster they run, the more processing you're, you're going to be able to do and there's going to be less buffering, essentially. Yeah, you'll, it will definitely run smoother, so more cores, more, you know, just more general processing power, higher clock speeds, all that kind of stuff will make yeah. a difference. We'll get more into this later, but in the way that you can upgrade your graphics cards for better gaming, upgrading your sound card isn't going to give you better audio processing, not specifically anyway, obviously there's certain exceptions to this where they have onboard DSP, but we'll, we'll get back to that later because that's a very big common misconception, mm -hmm. I think. Um, this brings us also very nicely onto price. Um, so we want to talk about the way that price may be kind of you know different as a kind of a baseline depending on if you're doing a desktop, some kind of laptop, Mac or a PC. Mm -hmm. So I guess we should probably talk about the cheapest options first. Right, and that would cheapest option would definitely be getting a desktop PC, um, whether you're buying one pre-built or building one yourself, because uh, then you can just completely pick the bare bones components that you need, so like your processor, your drives, your memory, um, and then you don't have to worry as much about things like graphics cards and uh, anything extraneous. Um, so that would be probably the cheapest option. You can build a really solid computer that that runs Ableton for like 500 bucks. Yeah, and it's, it'll get you very far. Probably a lot less. I mean, an another. Probably another good option might be a gaming laptop. Um, it might not have the you know the highest resolution screen or even the nicest colors, but that doesn't really matter for music. And for like 500 bucks, I think like Acer Pre Acer do like a Predator for like 500 or something like that. I don't know, but it'll it'll be designed for gaming. But the kind of stuff that's going to make it good at gaming will also be useful for you know for music production in terms of power. So that's going to be the cheapest option, I think. It's, it's a bit of a generalization to say that Macs are overpriced. They can be very overpriced for what you get, particularly when you're like weighing things like compactness. So like an iMac Pro for five grand, the power of that computer you could build easily for far less as a PC. However, in some circumstances, like the more entry-level MacBook Pros and even the entry-level iMacs, considering the quality of the screen you get built in, it's not like a terrible value for money at all. Um, and for example, the laptops we have here today, so this is a 13-inch MacBook Pro, and this is the 13-inch Microsoft Surface Book 2. Now, this is the one that I use because I just like something portable and compact, but we're just kind of using it to illustrate options. Now, there's not a huge amount of price difference between these two. To be honest, I got this because it also had a better graphics card, and I use it for entertainment when I'm traveling, so it was kind of a two birds, one stone thing. Yeah. Um, the reason that I bought this MacBook is because I've been using Mac since I was like 14 years old, and I'm kind of just addicted to Apple products at this point. And I know these are solid. I've had like three MacBooks. They're great for touring. They have the unibody construction. They're like very solid. Um, and I just like them. That said, I would be totally fine and happy using one of these. Um, and I, you know, I really don't have a preference. Like when I buy, when I have to replace this, I might get a PC. I might get another MacBook. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, despite everything we were talking about earlier with the, the audio driver differences, there are, you know, <laughs> me and Willie still have actually ended up opting to use PCs most of the time for music production. Yeah. Um, I, th I think ultimately though, 
if you're looking at best bang for buck, it's always going to be PC, probably, especially if you get something used. Um, but if you're weighing in something like, for example, durability, which is something we'll get onto in a second, then MacBook Pros are not a bad buy. They're not just kind of priced as a fashion accessory overpriced without good reason. They're, they're pretty durable, uh, which is the next thing we should talk about, which is obviously much more relevant when you're talking about laptops than desktops, because desktops, durability isn't really an issue, really. You leave them on the desk and hopefully don't knock them over. <laughs> yeah, and don't spill water yeah. on them, or Mountain Dew, or whatever you drink. Yes, yeah, so like your excellently designed thing with definitely no way of liquid getting in the top. Yeah. It's a very, very safe design. Well, yeah, I just I just try to remember to not put drinks on top of the computer. It's hard sometimes, but... <laughs> <laughs> just plants. <laughs> just plants. Yeah. So one I of don't the water the plant while it's on the computer. Okay, that's good. Well, it's plastic anyway, so that would be a waste of water. I have a on. real plant at home. Oh, fair enough. So I have to water it. <laughs> anyway, so... Durability, um, when, you're, when you're touring, um, durability is actually a big thing to think about. And I've gone through a lot of different PC laptops and not many of them are very well made, to be honest, in terms of ruggedness. I mean, not in terms of kind of consumer grade stuff anyway. Compared to something that's like made out of solid metal, I've got a 2013 MacBook Pro, which I still have, and still works fine after six years. Um, I've never had a PC laptop last that long ever before, and it's been dropped multiple times. They're pretty tough, yeah. so that's one of the things you're paying through, paying for with a with a MacBook Pro. Yeah, they're really good to construction, and I always have a case on mine. It's not on there right now for the video, but I've always put cases on my MacBooks because sometimes I will drop them, and that's just really scary. Uh, if you drop one of these, like the metal's immediately going to get uh, scratched up. So, put a case on it, pr protect your investment. Just like 10, 10, 15 bucks goes a long way. Definitely. I mean, there are better built options coming out in the PC world now. So for example, with this Surface Book 2, this is also a single kind of unibody construction like a MacBook Pro. Um, obviously, everyone's kind of copying Apple's lead on that, but they are definitely getting a lot better. So it's not like the clear winner it was. In 2013, when I bought mine, there were no PC laptops that you could buy that were like MacBook Pros. They were just in a complete league of their own at that point. So, but, you know. Durability is important if you're on the road. If you're at home and you're just making music, it's probably less of a less of an issue, really. One factor to consider when buying a computer is, are you gonna be able to upgrade it? What's the upgradability of your computer? Um, obviously, um, laptops, not very upgradable. Uh, the older MacBooks were, you could swap out the hard drive and the RAM. The newer ones, I'm not so, so sure if you can do that without bringing it into a retailer. No, um, generally not, no. Yeah, that, generally that, that's not. true of PCs as well. Like, this is completely unupgradable. This is kind of a bit now the sign of the times. Yeah. However, the one clear advantage that PCs have is in this category. Um, because even the desktop Macs, you can't really do hardly anything to these days. They're so locked down. A lot of them use like laptop components. They can make them all slim and nice looking. Whereas with custom PCs, you can literally change bits in and out whenever you want, upgrade them bit by bit. You can if something yeah. breaks, you don't, you know, you can easily fix it yourself. You don't have to throw the thing away or mm -hmm. take it into a service center or any of that stuff so yeah. so that this is kind of a, a, a question of what's your budget at the moment what's your budget going to be in like a year because if you have a big budget this upgradability is not gonna be an issue for you you're just gonna spend as much money as you can getting the best possible product and not have to worry about it ever again but if you're like on a budget and you want to like get your hands wet uh, <laughs> get, get your feet wet first um, and then once you make some more money maybe upgrade which is a smart thing to do then you can start with like a kind of starter pc uh put it together yourself um and then kind of replace components as you as you go over time yeah and just to make some personal recommendations on upgradability, if I was to do this now and I wanted to start at the bottom, for example, AMD's product line's awesome. Um, you have an AMD uh, chip in there, one of the Ryzen chips, because their line go right the way from like these $99 quad core chips, right the way up with this generation room and there's gonna be 16 core chips that use the same slots on the motherboard so you can swap the chips out later in life and go from like a $100 chip to like a $600 chip yeah. without having to change really anything other than the chip in the computer, not even the motherboard. So there's a lot, you can you could easily turn like a $500 computer into a $3,000 computer bit by bit if you wanted mm -hmm. to, and you're just never gonna really be able to do that with a Mac. So that is definitely something to bear in mind, and you know, a trade-off that certainly to me was worth it, just being able to change as I wanted. Yeah, especially with, with AMD too, because like everything is in that same AM4 socket. Yeah. It's like Intel has more um, varied, 
uh, processor. Yeah, sockets. they tend to bring out these new motherboards every year. So yeah. that want you need those for the new chips sometimes. Whereas the AMD have committed for like four or five years that yeah. you'll be able to use any of that that those chips and those motherboards, which is pretty cool. But yes, going in a little bit more in depth there, but that's uh, something to think about. Okay, we're now we're going to talk about some of the things that will not help you if you're buying a computer to produce music. Yes, we want a lot of people can easily burn money on stuff that's not really going to make much difference at all. <coughs> Key Willy. Uh, yes, this this will not help at all. This is a very expensive graphics card. It's great for wasting time, not so great for making music. I mean, it's you know, I'm sure you'll get an incredible frame rate on the cursor in Ableton out of that thing, but yep, 144 hertz in Ableton. Yeah, so. it's great. It's actually awesome. But yeah, that, that's kind of the reason, one of the reasons why I brought this computer in here today is because it looks really cool, but uh, it's obviously like half meant for gaming, half meant for music. You don't need like a liquid cooler and a gigantic graphics card um, if all you're doing is producing music. If you're building your own computer, you can buy like the cheapest graphics card you can possibly find because all you need is a picture, you need to be able to see Ableton. Um, so you don't need to like spend lots of money on that um, and like a stock cooler is going to be fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing as well is audio interfaces. Yeah. Um, I use a $99 Mackie audio interface. Um, what, I'm assuming you've got something kind of similar. Yeah, I've got basically the same thing. I have like a Scarlett um, 2 in 2 out interface and also the Native Instruments complete one and you know I think the Native, Instrument, the Native Instruments one is a little more expensive but Honestly, I don't see the difference. <laughs> oh, I mean, in practical terms, there won't be really. Yeah. Uh, don't spend loads of money on crazy expensive audio interfaces. The reality is you just need something that's gonna cover the bases and anything beyond that is probably gonna be a waste of money for most people yeah. uh, uh, in the early stages in all practical terms. Like I said, I just wanna reiterate, this is not scientific fact. This is just practical advice on what's gonna be good use of money for you guys. Yeah, for a sound card, get like a $100 USB interface, which it's, its main purpose is to drive your monitors. You don't need anything more than that. Yeah, I think the most important thing is make sure it has XLR balanced out. And generally anything over about 30 or 40 bucks is or gonna quarter have inch. that. Quarter yeah, as long as, as long as they're balanced outputs. Yeah, yeah. balanced. Um, it could be TRS, quarter inch, or XLR. Yeah, balanced. just not RCA like the phono cables because you're gonna get signal noise with them and that genuinely is gonna like make things worse. Even on like, you know, kind mid range of. speakers, you'll get more. If you can only afford a $20 RCA interface, just go for it, it's fine. But yeah, <laughs> you'll still be able to make music. But like yeah. it's, it's, it, will make us, it will make a potential difference. But anything beyond that, I, I would definitely not spend money on. But unless you're making music at that level, um, spending crazy money on an interface with like the top level, you know, DAC in it is just really not gonna make a huge amount of objective difference, um, especially yeah. if your monitors are below a thousand dollars and you're not in a treated room, it's gonna, you know, be completely imperceptible, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, my monitors are pretty nice, and I'm powering them with like cheap equipment still, and it's yeah. fine with me. I don't have a treated room or anything. Yeah. So those those are, those are probably like the two things that if you're building a custom PC anyway, or even specking out a laptop, yeah, um, you know, it's nice to have, but they're not going to make really any difference. Um, graphics does not matter. But yeah, and uh, the sound card, not hugely matter. Matters, yes, a little, matters a little bit the sound card, but like you can only go so far beyond the point that it won't make difference. I think, but there is one exception here that we should make, and it's not really technically about it being an audio interface, but some audio interfaces like the UAD stuff have built-in DSP, so basically built-in, you know, purpose-specific chips that will run the plugins. But that's kind of a separate thing that just happens mm -hmm. to be in. They just put it in the card so they can basically sell it for more money. It doesn't need to be in the audio interface. It's just a, a thing. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to use the UAD plugins, which are really good, um, then the UAD interface is great for that. Yeah, but you're you know you're paying essentially for a way of, of, of reducing load in your CPU then yeah. rather than the actual interface itself. It's not like it's very costly. It's gonna make it sound better, particularly in a hardware way. It's a costly road, but if uh, if cost doesn't matter, then oh, if very helpful. If cost doesn't matter then uh, this would be a very different video. Yeah. We, we want to just kind of make sure that we give you guys a balanced, you know, money is an object type advice. Mm -hmm. So uh, last thing we'll talk about is used or new. Should you buy a new computer or a used or refurbished one? Yeah, and I think there's, especially if you're just getting started and you want in particular maybe a desktop PC where even if something is a bit worn out, it can be replaced. Buying something used is a really good idea. I remember when, when we wrote all the earlier Dodge and Fusky releases, most of those were actually built on a PC that I basically bought used 
put a bigger hard drive and a better graphics card in and the USB audio interface and then that had kind of been my computer and that would have been a few hundred, something like that, not a lot of money. But generally speaking, with especially with things like laptops that have you know, batteries that will die over time and screens that can get scratched and all that kind of stuff. Um, not to mention the fact that most insurance companies will not insure used laptops because it's such a common, uh, you know, cause of like fraud, like claims on insurance. So if you are getting an expensive laptop, it probably is worth getting that new. I would have thought. Yeah, I afford it. for sure. I've never bought a used computer before, personally, um, since I was kind of a kid, I would just spend my whole budget on getting a new MacBook and it's just really paid off for me. So I'd, I would say ultimately, if you have the money, if you can save up enough money, I would really recommend the MacBooks. They're amazing. They can do everything. You can use them at home. You can use them on the road. If you're really into PCs and you like saving a little bit of money, then PCs are great too. Obviously the, the laptops are still going to be expensive, um, but yeah, that's just my advice. Yeah, so hopefully this video has given you guys a fairly balanced uh, overview of it. Like I said, I don't think there's a specific obvious answer because it depends on your circumstance and depends on your preferences. So we've really just tried to give you as much insight of our experience of using computers over the you know the last decade or two uh, for music and how that's worked for us. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of wrap up, I would say if you want the cheapest option, it's going to be a desktop PC or a cheap entry-level laptop, maybe something used. If money is less of a concern, MacBook Pros do actually make a great buy and are worth the money in the long run because you'll get so many years of use out of them. So, you know, probably those are kind of where yeah. the sweet spots lie. And if you are a gamer and you love gaming, just get one of these and make sure it has a nice processor because this, this is amazing for producing music as well as playing games. And I guess that kind of leaves the kind of more like expensive PC laptop. And this is really just if you're traveling as well. And this, this for me makes a great kind of on the road entertainment thing. So I don't just work, I'll do other stuff on the road. And you know, if you want to play video games, it's great. But for making music, this would actually probably be the worst option of the lot <laughs> in terms of, you know, spending money. But not to say that it's bad. It's no, it's, a good it's just again, it's got a GPU you don't need and it's not a Mac. So there's a few limitations there, but yeah. They're all perfectly valid options and we bought all of them with our own money just to show that really there isn't a clear choice. It's just down to what you wanted to do. All right, so uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped uh, educate you a little bit about computers, which one to buy, stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, Willie's done a video with Matt Belly Live about gear selection that you can check out on the channel. And if you guys want us to cover any more stuff um, tech related, advice related, please just drop a comment in the link below and we're gonna try and do some more of these kind of like, you know, just, just talking and sharing our experiences type videos. So let us know what you'd like to be covered.